Hola, luchadores and luchadores. Greetings and welcome to the fourth episode of Lucha Libre Figures and Facts, a podcast that examines the history of Lucha Libre toys and action figures. Brought to you by Mass Republic, Boss Fight Studio, and the Lucha Central Network. My name is Jeffrey Toon, and with me today is partner and art director at Boss Fight Studio, Eric Arana. Eric, how are you doing, man? I'm very good. Uh, I've had a, a good couple of weeks of uh, wrestling and lucha collecting, and <laughs> which has always made me ha- makes me happy. Boss Fight is doing very well. We're very, very busy right now uh, with not just with the Legends of Lucha Libre line, but also the Hero Hacks, uh, mm-hmm. Phantom and Tarzan and Zoro and Flash Gordon line. So we're, we're, things are just going nuts over at uh, Boss Fight Studio. So. Yeah, you guys are crushing it over there with everything you've got going on. Man, how do you stand on top of everything? We're working constantly, actually, <laughs> even in the car. And we're always answering messages and, and talking back and forth and filming um, different things. And it's it's a little bit crazy and because of the you know due to the pandemic we're not all in the office at the mm-hmm. same time so it's you know we kind of go in and in and out at, uh, on shifts and um most of us are working from home but because we're not all in the office it's uh it's definitely a bit uh difficult to keep up with with all of the the, the work constantly so it's it is definitely a little trying right now yeah and then with all the factories over in the uh in the far east you also are running into those problems as well as far as figures hitting the website and being ready to ship and everything we lost about three months total where the factories were shut down Mm -hmm. and um even now that the factories are up and running uh they're running at about 20 to 30 percent staff so they're not even running as fast as normal um so we we are you know, there's there's a a big change in 2020 for how fast we're we're getting stuff out, and it normally takes about a year to begin with, and now it's taking a little longer. So yeah, well, nobody could predict it a pandemic. I mean, who knew that? No, nope. <laughs> everything's going good over here. Uh, last time I spoke to you, you you and Christopher McLeod were actually on the Fully Posable Wrestling Figure podcast, and that was a lot of fun. And I want to thank both of you for being on. So, oh, thank you. We 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 love doing it. And uh, for a wrestling podcast, we sure talked a lot about GI Joe that day. <laughs> <laughs> We've been doing that a lot lately, and a lot of people are like, "Hey, we love it. Hey, we hate it." And it's like, all right, you can't please everybody. No, it's like my. It's like one of my favorite comedians. His name is Mitch Hedberg. He's one of my favorite jokes of his is, uh, you can't please everybody. And last night, everybody was at my show. (laughs) (laughs) So anyways, that's the way it is. But this week, we have a fun, exciting show. We'll be discussing La Parca. But before we do, why don't we kick it over to Denise Salcedo over at Lucha Central. Hey everyone, it's Denise Salcedo here in Lucha Central Central with a reminder of where and when to catch all of the great network content this week. Monday, Business of the Business returns as Master Public President Kevin Kleinrock welcomes artist Jesse Hernandez, better known to many as Urban Aztec, to the show. The two will talk about both sides of Jesse's works in the licensing game, creating original designs for prints, toys, and apparel, and working with everyone from Bay Area sports teams and Marvel to Mass Republic and the WWE, merging his signature style with some of the biggest properties on the planet. On Tuesday on Mass Mats and Mayhem, the crew takes aim at an AEW star they are throwing up on the wall of shame for what they say is stealing from a former Lucha Underground star. Then they even take aim at Lucha Underground itself, calling Season 1, Episode 15, trash, and debate the Hano's use of the TV series, plus lots more. Check out the premiere video stream Tuesday at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern, on the Lucha Central YouTube channel and at luchacentral.com. Then listen to it on your favorite podcast platform every Wednesday. This Tuesday night, live on WrestleBossLive.com, Fabi Chulo is back to talk pro wrestling and MMA. 
coming off a huge victory at the Fight to Win Grappling Tournament, John Thomas joins the show to talk about how wrestling has helped his jiu-jitsu game. And then, luchador Steve Payne will join the show to talk about his experiences in SoCal, AAA, Lucha Underground, and more. Visit WrestleBossLive.com Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. Pacific to listen live or call in with questions or download the show on podcast platforms on Wednesdays. Wednesday nights live on Facebook, it's Spanish show La Mesa de los Margaros, giving you both the news and the cheese made from around the lucha world. Special guests and a whole lot of fun make it one of the most talked about shows in Mexico. This week, things get a little extreme as Lunatics Extreme grabs a seat at the table and the crew talk Lucha Extrema in Mexico. Plus, you never know who else may stop by unannounced. Thursdays, it's straight out of the bodega with Papo Esco and PWR promoter Gabriel Ramirez. This week, two of the PWR Training Academy's top prospects, Charisma and Gavilan, pull up to the spot to talk about learning the Lucha Libre style, how the pandemic has led to distance learning even for pro wrestlers, and getting things back and running at the academy. The life of a Lucha Libre trainee is not often explored, and even I'm really looking forward to this one. On Friday, it's your double dose of Lucha Central Weekly podcast, one in English y el otro en Español. Lucha Central Weekly is where you'll find all the top stories of the week, both inside and out of the ring from Mexico and anywhere luchadores are in action across the globe. This week, both shows update you on the upcoming CMLL iPay-Per-View and their big annual Aniversario event, along with a look at this coming weekend's WWE NXT TakeOver and SummerSlam events, which includes the in-ring debut of El Principe Misterio, Dominic. Plus, on Lucha Central Weekly in English, AAA Super Estrella Mr. Iguana gives his first English interview. Be sure to subscribe and follow all your favorite Lucha Central Network series on your favorite podcast platforms. And please be sure to give a rating and review to help more fans find the shows that you love. For now, this is Denise Salcedo signing off from Lucha Central Central. Have a great week, everyone. If we are ready, let's ring the bell. Talk about the history of La Park, LA Park, uh, otherwise known as La Parca. La Parca slash LA Park has has had a in- interesting career and uh, very different, with you know name changes, um, costume changes uh, for legal reasons. His name his name is Adolfo Margarito Tapea. Abera. Now I probably totally bit butchered that. Um, that was fantastic. I applaud you. <laughs> and. Um, <laughs> Uh, so L- that's L.A. Park's real name. And his face is still unknown, which is kind of strange because usually names and faces kind of go together in the Lucha Libre world. If you don't know their face, you also don't know their name. He's an interesting one because his real name is well known, but his his face has still not been revealed. He's he's had many mask versus mask or mask versus hair matches and stuff, and he always wins. So he he has n- never had to reveal his face. He he started in, in Mexico. He's from Mexico. So he started in Mexico in the early 80s. He eventually found himself at, at let me see if I can say, say this correctly. We, we always <laughs> say AAA, but it's actually uh, tri- AAA ah, is, <laughs> is actually how it's pronounced. <laughs> While at AAA, he developed his new character of La Parca, which is the Reaper. That's what that, what that means. While at AAA, he won several titles. And he was a Rudo uh, heel, which was really interesting because... During that whole era where he was he was a Rudo, when he came here to the U.S. to WCW, he kind of became more of a face because of his kind of whimsical take on his entrance and the way he would kind of mock his opponent, you know, with his with the the La Parca shuffle and the, yeah, the little you know, dance, yeah, like coming out with the chair as the chairman <laughs> and like dancing on the chair and stuff like that, like he kind of became more of a face, more of a, a kind of a light, lighter character. And then after WCW, he kind of went back to that more Rudo heel persona, mm-hmm. which is just kind of very interesting. He, his time at AAA is really the era where we're mostly going to be focused on today with the, the figure we're talking about. But, you know, at the same time, the look 
stuck through most of WCW and his short time at ECW, which which wasn't very much. He he kind of teamed up with Psychosis, had some tag matches with Rey Mysterio Jr. and Conan. And then he, he very quickly bounced over to WCW exclusively. He had his whole like kind of run as a singles wrestler. And then he eventually, in around 1998, he joined, uh, which is about two years after he went started at WCW, he joined Eddie Guerrero's LWO stable. I'm mm-hmm. repping LWO today. <laughs> and um, that, that stable didn't last. It lasted about a year-ish. It wasn't super long. I don't think it had quite the impact uh, WCW wanted it to have. They didn't capitalize on its full potential. No. I, th- I think it would have helped if... I, I know originally it, it, was, it became Eddie Guerrero's stable, but I think originally it was supposed to be Conan's. That was the plan. Mm-hmm. And I think it, with Conan being booted from the NWO... If he had like kind of t- started the LWO, it would have made more sense, and it maybe would have been a little stronger. Um, I feel like, yeah, I feel Eddie Guerrero was is one of the greatest, possibly the greatest of all time, and he, but at, at, at WCW, he wasn't really given that same chance on the mic. Correct for his personality as as like Conan was, and certainly not Eddie Guerrero, not the the personality that Eddie Guerrero went on to become at WWE. Correct. But, but you know, going back to La Parca, he, he, he left WCW in 2000 before the company bottomed out and was purchased by WWE. So he, he, he never went over to WWE. As far as I know, he never was at WWE. I, no. I, I looked into it and I couldn't find anything about that. He would return to Mexico, kind of toggle between CMLL and AAA. But while he was at WCW... AAA gave the costume and name to another wrestler. And so there were two La Parcas. There was one at WCW and one in AAA. And that's why there were like legal issues. And when it wasn't really a big deal while he was at WCW, but when he went back to Mexico, it became a huge deal. Mm -hmm. There were lawsuits and, and this battle. Eventually it would force the original La Parca to change his name to LA Park. Correct. And he, he would often have emblazoned down the side of his boots original. <laughs> like, so he was the original L.A. Park. And um, he was trolling. Yeah, he, he really was for a while there. Eventually, he would go back to AAA and feud with the second La Parca. And they would have battles over their name. They would have, ba- you know, they would have all these stipulation battles. They would go back and forth with winning. At that point, though, L.A. Park as he was known, he didn't really want the name back particularly. It was just kind of a a, a show and, mm-hmm. and part of the entertainment and everything. He had made he had made his piece with the new La Parca. AAA was un, under new management and stuff, so it, it wasn't quite as vicious as it had been. Being the luchador historian that you love being <laughs> and that you know that you do know your but my question to you is is after La Parca left WCW, did you follow him afterwards? I, I tried, but I kind of fell off. And, and even then, it was hard to follow and find shows from Mexico. It, it wasn't really on cable. And we didn't have, if it was, I, I didn't have cable anyway. Yep. The internet wasn't as permeated with all of it. More recently, I've gotten back into him because I loved him. I loved you. Uh, back at WCW, although it took me a little while to love him because, uh, uh, you know, he didn't cut promos and stuff like that. He didn't speak English. So that was right. difficult for him to do on a live broadcast. But more recently, because like he he kind of bounces around now, he's more independent, but he'll be on AAA a lot. Like he just recently had a, a pretty good run with uh pentagon jr which was fantastic to see two of my favorite luchadors you know wrestling again and or wrestling against each other and i know he kind of bounces around and 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 of course he often wrestles with i I believe it's his sons hijo del la park and Mm -hmm. la park jr Mm -hmm. so there's kind of this stable of of la parkas (laughs) um (laughs) And and it really is kind of it's it, it kind of is a bummer that the the second La Parca who made the character his own and di- different he didn't copy L A Park's like dance and all that stuff he was his, very much his own character his own version of La Parca yep and he um it's it's very unfortunate and that he recently died from mm. 
the, that horrible wrestling accident where he he dove through the ropes and and uh if you, in the video you see his feet catch the ropes and it changes his angle and he just mm-hmm. goes head first into the barrier and, and hurt his neck and that that was a r- true tragedy and and awful now were you a fan of his in wcw yes i it, it's funny because i at first like i said it, it took me a little while to warm up to him um i loved so many of the luchadors right when they came in mm-hmm. uh la Parca took me a little more time to it took a few months for me to go like yeah this guy's really amazing i get it at the time it was you know i was younger i was in my 20s and or you know my late teens early 20s and it was so it took me a little while to get that his more tongue-in-cheek approach to his character where he wasn't coming in and being a strict good guy or bad guy he was kind of coming in like i said he earlier he you know he was doing his his crazy dance and his turnaround <laughs> and it was such this kind of tongue-in-cheek thing so it took me a little while to to get into him but eventually I just freaking loved him and I thought he was so good and so, so entertaining to watch mm-hmm. much agreed he was one of those that you look forward to seeing each night on Monday Nitro and the only bad thing about Nitro is they didn't know what to do with the cruiserweights at that time no they didn't they didn't know one week Hooventu would be a good guy next week he's a bad guy yeah and you couldn't you couldn't really gauge what was going to happen that following week is Hoovy going to be a good guy or a bad guy is La Parker going to be a good guy or a bad guy? You just didn't know. Yeah. But La Parker always stood out as one of the top cruiserweights at that time. Yeah. And it was because of his uniqueness and his, I, I hate to say it, but his comedy, you know, yeah. because I viewed him more as a very good wrestler, but the, the comedy aspect of it, it, it kind of outshined his good wrestling skill. Like he would come out, like you said, he would do the La Parker shuffle. Um, and then he would always carry the chair. He called himself the chairman of WCW or something yeah. like that. But uh, one thing I didn't know is I didn't know he was in ECW. And I loved ECW back yeah. in the day, but I had no clue he was there. I think he only had a few of appearances there. I don't think he was ever signed. I think it was for, you know, even like, you know, Conan and and Juventud Guerrera and... Rey Mysterio. Rey Mysterio. Like, even they were only at... They were... ECW for less than a year and I think it was even less time for La Parca. like he it was very short period of time I love that weird stretch where they would pipe in the overdub and La Parca would like mime <laughs> that he was, yeah. he was really deep south southern drawl overdub it was yep. hilarious go skull captains in the his house when you scope the chair, you don't need the 411. It's the 1414. One for me and one for my homies. WWE would later to go on and copy that with uh, Funaki. Yes, that's right. Oh, Taz, Mr. Red Hook, your words, they amuse me. <laughs> it was just so funny, but it was so funny. And the fact that La Parca actually caught on and is so well remembered, he, he's probably the most requested luchador that we get at boss fight studio for the legends of lucha libre line to come with a chair right well of course <laughs> <laughs> he has to come with a chair accessory <laughs> and um but like he it's it, he's so popular with with even the the u.s audience and the fact that he's that popular and he didn't speak english mm-hmm. so he couldn't cut the promos and all of that stuff is really you know statement on his talent and who he was at at creating this character and this personality without like having to talk about it Mm -hmm. you know out loud which is great what i remember most is so up here in northern california we would get uh univision yeah and so we would always get it was either triple a or cmll and this was around 94 95 era Mm -hmm. and so we would always get uh luchadors up here or i shouldn't say luchadors we get luchador wrestling or triple uh, a anyways i remember uh i was flipping through the channels and i was like oh yeah triple a is on it was usually saturdays maybe at about two o'clock or so around there and i remember seeing la Parca come out very unique get up black and white costume very skeletor from yeah. the man you know <laughs> but in black and white and i'm like this is unique. This is great. And I would always watch it. And usually I, my attention span because of the language barrier usually lasted about 30 minutes. So what I would do is I would turn the volume down, 
<laughs> listen, listen to a Jerky Boys uh, <laughs> album or something. I bet you didn't think you were going to hear Jerky Boys today. No. Anyway. <laughs> But I would be watching the wrestling, and I always remember certain people standing out at that time. Conan was one, obviously, but yeah. I remember seeing uh, La Parca just because of his getup, his uniqueness, and just everything about him, just the way he carried himself, always very entertaining. Uh, again, didn't know he went to ECW before going to WCW, and then when I saw him in WCW, I was like, oh, yeah. I remember yeah. that guy, you know, and then it all starts to kind of register who he is. That would have been Triple A time frame, 90, 93, 94. Okay. He was so much fun and so entertaining. And I love the way he mocked his opponents. I love the way he, like when he would like clothesline somebody down and then he would just like kind of walk off like all <laughs> regal and, and pompous. Like it was just so, he would he was so good. And um, you couldn't help but fall in love with him. No. <laughs> well, before we get into the figures, we do need to take a short break and hit up our great, great sponsors over at LuchaMasks.com. Lucha-Masks.com, in partnership with Mass Republic, give you personal protective masks to keep you Lucha strong in the fight versus COVID-19. With world-class luchadors Blue Demon Jr., the Lucha Brothers, L.A. Park, Ultimo Dragon, Kane Velasquez, Conan, and so much more. Head to lucha-masks.com and you too can become a masked warrior. Lucha-masks.com, powered by Pro Wrestling Revolution. As stated before, we're going to be talking about today the uh, Kellyan Laparca figure mm -hmm. from 1994. For those of you who are watching, I'm holding it up in the camera here. Look at that beauty. Oh, so nice. Isn't so it? much fun. Um, I love the, uh, you know, I, I love the packaging and the, the figure is so much fun. And um, so, the, yeah, these came out in 1994 in Mexico. I don't know what the retail was at all. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think they were released in the U.S. At least I never saw them. They weren't. Easy stats on this are, you know, they didn't have accessories. Loose nowadays, you can pick them, you can pick up La Parca anyway for about $35, $40-ish dollars. Mm -hmm. uh on the card though he runs about 150 ish that's a big price discrepancy <laughs> he is it's kind of crazy now because of the material that these are made out of the loose figures are very often very very worn mm -hmm. the, the paint doesn't s stick to this or at least the paint used doesn't quite stick to it correctly so it you know when you see these loose they're usually pretty beat up so that that might account for that very lj very ljn esque yes yeah and in fact they kind of fit in with those stylistically you know very much yeah the no articulation a little bit of smaller so old san francisco toy makers made some wcw figures back in 94 95 they would probably fit in more with those because those weren't as big as the ljn yeah so but i mean those are still beautiful figures i mean if you are able to find them with some good uh, paint, paint you know not worn like ljn-esque very similar yeah you got some good looking figures right there and from what i can tell the this kellyan line everybody was a unique sculpt mm -hmm. i think there's a few variations out there um like obviously the you know the vampiro has two very distinct variations and i think yes. some of the other guys do as well outside of la Parca, do you have any others i do not this is the only one i have and i just obtained it this week and I'm so excited by it that <laughs> I, I think I want to track down at the very least, I, I think I need the Vampiro and the Conan. Like the, the Conan especially is from, you know, he had already lost his mask and mm -hmm. it's, it's very close to what he wore early on in WCW. Right, like right. The, the the fringe and the and the crazy colors and stuff like that. So now I know how you are and you love articulated figures. Yes. I know you love your articulation. With these being non-articulated, do you still love them as much? I, you know, because, you know, when it comes to vintage stuff, I, mm -hmm. I have a lot of, uh, you know, love for, for vintage toys, even though they don't have the articulation and the same amount of de detail as modern toys. Right. Um, so this is the type of thing that I, I do. I, I love this figure. He's, he's so much fun and very cool. I, at the same time, I don't feel the need to open this 
Gotcha. So I won't be breaking your heart on this podcast by opening this toy in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> You're a man after my heart, dude. <laughs> yeah. Um, this will be hanging on my wall in my office, uh, you know, uh, next time I go in. And what I didn't know about these figures, and I'll see if I can show it well, is there's a triple A stand. Like it's the triple A logo. Oh. For him to stand on. So that's kind of nice. And, uh, you know, as I said earlier, I love the the, the design is is very retro '80s with the you know green and pink and the the green lines behind him mm-hmm. and the on the black like it, it's very like neon '80s. Um, yep. But it's such a, it's such an appealing card with the you know you have the photo of him here, the figure here right next to it. Yeah. Um, and then on the back you have a bio card, which is pretty much just has his stats, his weight, his height, etc. And then you have this nice illustrated cross cell with, you know, a lot of other characters on it, uh, a lot of other talent and some really great ones too. Does it have a bio about Laparca back there too? It just, the only thing it has about him is the, is his stats here. Okay. So it's, okay. it's not really quite a bio so much as, you know, his height, his weight, <laughs> the circumference of his biceps it's interesting <laughs> where he's from um wait is his biceps bigger than hogan's well it says 32 pul so i'm not exactly sure what that means pounds per square inch oh wait no that's oh, a tire i'm sorry yeah that's yeah <laughs> <laughs> there's no way they were as big as hogan's uh oh, okay <laughs> never nearly as big as hogan um he didn't have the same pythons <laughs> I see that's one thing I love is bio cards on the back. Yeah. And that's that's one thing that I I know some toy lines have tried to replicate that, but it just doesn't have that same detail as the ones back in the 80s, like from yeah. LJNs or Hasbro or or you know, stuff like that. And that was one thing we loved is the bio cards in the back. And I I miss those from toys. Yeah, I think, you know, we're very big with the bio cards. Uh, mm-hmm. Almost all, all of our figures have it. And we, we will have short bios on, on our Legends of Lucha Libre figures because we, we do think it's important to talk about, you know, the, the talents, accomplishments, and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, what is very difficult for us is, you know, with the Hooventude figure coming up, like we can't really mention, we can mention accomplishments, but we can't call out by name WCW WCG. or WWE or ECW or any of that stuff, which is kind of difficult for us to write around, but, you know, we'll make it work, Mm -hmm. you know, but we, we are kind of bringing that back. It's going to be a mix of stats and like a short bio, but you know, our legends of Lucha Libre line will be bilingual. So it'll have it in English and in Spanish. So that's, that's cool. That's a little detail that I love is picking up on stuff like that in the the bio cards and stuff. So kudos to you guys. Thank you. Moving on with yes. LA Park figures, there was none other. There was supposed well, there, there were the knockoffs, the dollar stores. I love dollar store toys, dude. Oh, yeah. There, there's something about them. They're so cheesy, so bad it's good, you know? <laughs> like <laughs> instead of John Cena, it's Con Jenna or something. Yeah. Like that, you know, there, something like that. And there's so many wrestling and lucha, especially lucha knockoffs, where they're kind of mm-hmm. not a licensed item at all. Yeah. Um, I bought so many of those, you know, like four inch uh, luchador Mexican wrestlers where they're all in the same pose, which <laughs> yep. is, is very similar to the La Parca pose here. I bought so many when I was in Mexico City. Uh, because they were like it was like two dollars for twenty, you know, like it was it was like so <laughs> cheap. Um, but yeah, there, there's a couple a couple of different knockoffs of La Parca. I found a, a good image of one that that we put in the notes here in the show notes, and it'll be up on the in the video. And um, I can't even tell what the figure it's over might be, so much as it's just like kind of a knockoff, unlicensed La Parca figure, like mm-hmm. clearly. And I, I think the only other La Parca licensed figure that was ever supposed to come out was from Play- Playmates. Yes. And as you put down in here, it was shown at Toy Fair. It was supposed to be part of the CM- CMLL line. And yeah, the, the Lucha Libre USA Masked Warriors is what the line, like there's a Tania Bliss in it. And yeah. And uh, who was the other one? Uh, there was a uh, American wrestler, Mark, not, was it Gingerack? 
but he was called something else. Yeah, he was somebody else. But I, yeah, I think you're right. I think it was Mark Jindrak. And um, there was also, along with the canceled Laparca, there was going to be a, um, a Dr. Wagner Jr., which is also yes. Um, and the, the man, that Laparca figure, that that canceled Laparca figure is gorgeous with the secondaries and the such a nice sculpt and design. I I wish it had come out what really stood out with that because when you told me about it I, I had to look it up but what really stood out about that one is his outfit that went around the waist yeah the that looked so sweet yeah it's not his typical full like skeleton print that he he normally is known for it's like got this like vest this huge belt with a skull and these like flaps hanging down and it's just this, yep. it's this gorgeous figure Yep. Great figure right there, man. If only it would have came out. Yeah. I wonder where that prototype is. I wonder who has that. I don't know. That that prototype is almost finished. Like it, there's not like paint rub and the joints and stuff. I wonder how how close it was to production. Because normally when, when you have a prototype at a toy fair, sometimes they're, you know, a production figure, basically an early sample production figure or they're a hand painted prototype, mm-hmm. you know, like what, what you see with like currently with the AEW figures, you know, what, what they showed at toy fair, those were hand painted prototypes. What we showed at toy fair for Pentagon and, and Phoenix were hand painted prototypes. Mm-hmm. Um, we're about to show the wave one hand painted prototypes for uh, our Fanatico series, which is the, the one with Hooventude and Taya and Penta and Phoenix you can tell what's a hand painted prototype versus when it's a full production fig- figure um mm-hmm. because usually you know the skin is painted the black is painted whereas a production figure it's actually like cast in that color plastic so there's less paint and this laparca in these photos looks like it's cast in that color plastic which might mean this figure was almost ready to pull the trigger on Mm-hmm. And then it got canned at the last minute. And I do know that this line, the, the Lucha Libre USA Mask Royers line, kind of ended very suddenly. Yes. Yeah. Ended very quickly. It was almost like night and day. Like you walk into Walmart one day, next day they were just all off the pegs. Yep. It was just gone. Yeah. It's and, like and it wasn't even discounted. Yeah. If, if anybody out there listening has an extra Tenibles Jr., I'm looking <laughs> for one from this line. <laughs> How much are they going for on eBay? Uh, they're not super expensive. I just, uh, I always like to find deals and trade and stuff <laughs> like that. I like to wheel and deal a little more than just, you know, go on eBay and buy something. It's, it's, a, little less, gotcha. it's a little less fun that way. Um, <laughs> gotcha. I like to find somebody who's also looking for something. I really love trading. I, it, it's so much fun to, to do. And, and Have you ever lost out on a trade out of curiosity? I think. I'm not sure I have. I know, I know it happens, but I think it's way less common. I have lost out in the fact that sometimes I'll get something and the, the condition is not, you know, what was told. Mm-hmm. But I, I also feel like the judgment of condition is very um, personal. Like it, it, what one person says is a perfect figure isn't necessarily what I think might be a perfect figure and vice versa. Correct. So I, you know, I usually let it go. I often try and trade up where, and by that I mean like I, I like to give more than something is worth mm-hmm. worth of stuff, like okay. back because I just one I have tons of fodder all over the place, and so it's uh, you know a lot of a lot of times trading or selling for me is more about making room than making money or anything like that. So we hear a lot of people that will always trade away their dusty roads Hasbro for, let's say maybe this happened back in the day. I should say, I shouldn't say this happened now, but, (laughs) but a lot of people back in the day would trade away their dusty for, let's say an undertaker or a dusty for a Jimmy Snuka and then you could look back and you're you wish you could go back to him and go, okay, hold on. Let me I'm from the future, yeah. let me tell you what you're about to do. <laughs> yeah, I I have done that sometimes where I trade something because I, I haven't really looked into what I have and what it's worth. Mm-hmm. And then I realize later on I'm like, wow, that was worth a lot of money. I probably shouldn't have traded that. But then, you know, case rod is what it is, you know. Yeah. Hindsight's always twenty twenty, right? Yeah. <laughs> we are not Captain Hindsight. Yeah, and you know, I recently got a uh, a TJP Elite okay. figure from somebody, and um, he he was a little more scuffed up than I thought, 
in you know but it's it, it's not the end of the world i it, it, it was like i'm fine with it it's it's still a great figure and i don't know if you've ever met tjp but he's a super nice guy and really nice guy yeah really friendly and charismatic and and super fun he uh at expo lucha last year he was uh at the table next to us signing off and on throughout the weekend so we you know we kept kind of talking over the barrier and stuff like that he was just super great guy like really nice guy well you working with boss fight you can always add the tattoos that he is now inquir- uh, acquired yeah on. he is covered in tattoos yes. now including like a blue de- he has a blue demon tattoo on his lower arm now yep. and stuff like that yeah he's coated in tattoos <laughs> well that rounds out all the Laparca figures great great showing for him like i like i love the I, sh- I shouldn't say great showing. He's only had one figure, but I'm looking at that Playmates and I keep thinking, oh man, if that would have came out, that would have flown off the pegs. Oh yeah, but- it would have sold like crazy. Oh, absolutely. So I, it, it, Maybe the line could have gone on better if they had led with him and Dr. Mm-hmm. Wagner Jr. and Tania Bliss, like as, you know, kind of a... Because m- most of the characters, most of the talent, the names that were in that line were kind of owned by that that short run like lucha libre usa yep you know even like a lot of those wrestlers are still around but they they're not those characters anymore Mm -hmm. so like you know it's going to be like a decade from now or two decades from now i mean it's already happening where you're like mil muertes or vibiro or whatever like you know those characters aren't really they can't really be around anymore because they were owned by lucha underground Mm-hmm. And, and of course, Vibiro is a uh, luchasaurus now uh, over at AEW. But there's, you know, like Mil Mortes, it really is a bummer that he can't really, you know, use Mil Mortes as openly as, you know, he should because that it's such a great character for him. It was fantastic. Oh, it's great. Such a great <laughs> costume. I loved that whole, I loved him. Like he was one of my favorites. And even like, I love Ricochet. He's probably one of the currently best wrestlers pound for pound hands down like he's so amazing and i can't believe wdb can't figure out what to do with him apparently um not surprising <laughs> actually that's <laughs> but like he was like as prince puma he was amazing like i, I would love a figure of prince puma and we're never gonna see that like mm-hmm. so well as kevin said on last episode with vampiro they were well he didn't say it with us but he allowed us to say that ma- uh, that they uh, almost Pug- happened Yes, thank you. Master Public was supposed to do Lucha. Lu- <sighs> what was that show? Uh, Lucha Underground figures. Lucha sorry. Underground. Thank you. But if only those figures would have came out. Yeah, there, there's so there were so many great personalities and costumes over at at uh, Lucha Underground. Mariposa was a great costume and great look. Yep. Um, I I wish we could do the early look Pentagon from mm-hmm. like season one or even from season two the pentagon dark we we really can't touch either one of those uh legally for the for the costumes which is kind of a bummer but yeah his his original more like asian inspired costume with the white kind mm-hmm. of v that went out to the points on the shoulders and stuff like that like that was it was such a unique look and very cool his current look is probably gonna it's going to be his his classic iconic look is his current look but like you know but still those old looks are still so cool to see and iconic. Yeah. Well, that rounds out all the figures of La Parca. We now are going to hear from our partners over at LuchaCentral.com. If you're listening to this and you haven't visited LuchaCentral.com, it's time to do it. LuchaCentral.com is the online home for Lucha Libre, where you can get all of the top news in English and in Spanish. Find the best curated video content and original content not seen anywhere else. Find when Lucha Libre events would be happening in your area. Find photo galleries from top photographers covering Lucha Libre around the world. From weekly polls to annual awards. Seen and read by top executives in all of the major Lucha Libre promotions across the globe. And on top of that, it's free. LuchaCentral.com, your centralized place for all things Lucha Libre. As we end the show, I wanted to kind of kind of add in here a little bit uh, about the Legends of Lucha Libre line and talk about that and where things are. We're, we're just about to go to tooling 
on Fanatico's uh, Wave 1, which nice. is a uh, Taya Valkyrie, Pentagon, P- Penta Zero M, Ray Phoenix, and uh, Hoovy. We showed those at Toy Fair originally, and now we're, we're about to go to tooling on the Wave 1. We're also shortly going to go into tooling on Conan and Lady Madavia, which we, we kind of shifted them around into the tooling schedule, which is why we, we had prototypes at Toy Fair, but we, hadn't, we haven't tooled them yet because we kind of had to shift some stuff around in, in our tooling schedule. Um, we're also about to go to tooling in the next like month or two on the um, the mini mascotas, the the replica masks. Love those. So, oh yeah, me too. I I'm super excited. That might be the item I'm most excited excited about from Boss Fight Studio right now. Like it's just so exciting and such a like kitschy, unique item. And it does come with a little bust that you can display the mask on, correct? Yeah, across the line they all have the same bust, and then the mask goes on it and it's a, it's a soft it'll be a, like a, a soft uh pvc mask that kind of flexes around and th- those will not be blind boxed those will they can order no. straight okay those those will be blind boxed so oh, those the, will be yeah okay. the only the only way you're going to be able to get a full set or the easy way to get a full set will be to order the pdq case so the, the pdq case will have two sets of the the deco number one and then one set of the deco number two. So the, the, the secondary deco will, will be produced in half the amount of the regular deco. Gotcha. Okay. So yeah. So if, if you're a collector that has to have all of them, I would strongly suggest you get uh, order a PDQ when they go up on our site because we'll be selling them singly, at, w- at which point you won't know what you're getting or, and we'll be selling them by the, the, full, the full case, which and a, and a PDQ just, if anyone doesn't know, is that's the uh it's it's a box with artwork all around it and it usually it's like what you see at like target or walmart where they like unfold it and like tear the sides off and then Mm -hmm. there's you know all the items are inside of it like in a in an order so like it's that display piece correct for the shelf it's very similar to the old uh, W. Well, I shouldn't say old. About two years old, three years old. Uh, old WWF mystery minis where they were about yay tall. Yeah. Uh, once one pose, you could grab them off the tar- target uh, shelves. Yeah, the the loyal subjects WWE figures are in the similar thing, except they're they're windowed. Yep. Um, we're we're doing. They're not they're not ready to go to tooling yet, but we're we're also doing the. Um, the luchacitos which are like mini figures Mm -hmm. in in a very similar style to those loyal subject wwe ones and those will be window boxed gotcha okay it it will again be each pdq will have two sets of the of deco one and one set of deco two but they'll be window boxed so you'll be able to see which ones they are okay um but we wanted the masks specifically to kind of be a chase item and and some something for people to kind of have fun collecting and you can always trade with your friends you know maybe exactly. you got maybe you got one that your friend didn't get yeah i, I we're always trying to um because we, we also have like the our, our what we call our mini kits which mm-hmm. are unpainted kind of like that they, they go to they go alongside of our vitruvian hacks line but they're mini kits of like a couple of heads and unpainted accessories that can go onto our blanks or our, our Vitruvian hacks figures and they're blind boxed or blind bagged. And we're always trying to encourage people to just, if you really have to have them all buy the PDQ, if you're all, if you're going to risk buying them single to single mm-hmm. trade, please, please get a community together and trade because that's, it, we're always trying to kind of push that mentality with, with our product Mm -hmm. overall it's fun bring the community together bring the collectors together and you know so yeah when it comes to the masks and the minifigures like by all means get a community together to to trade and and have fun so yeah yep absolutely that's great man i love those mini masks those things are great oh yeah i'm so excited about we were uh they're being painted right now the uh prototype the three-dimensional prototypes finally and they they're just gorgeous like they're <laughs> so cool to see and to finally see them in three dimensions is just so amazing i can tell how excited you are over them. i'm so excited <laughs> about that item <laughs> anything else coming from boss fight um you know as always check check out our our site uh, bossfightshop.com 
follow us please follow us on facebook twitter instagram we're boss fight studio studio on all of those mm-hmm. we're always posting tons of stuff currently we're, we're in the middle of august uh currently we're in the middle of our hero hacks month mm-hmm. so this month is all devoted to hero hacks promotion and pre-sales and all that stuff uh for the rest of my shout outs and stuff uh thank you to mass republic and uh Kevin Kleinrock for helping me score this amazing Laparca figure. <laughs> and, um, you know, as always, a huge shout out to our uh, producer, Christopher McLeod. And please listen to the Full Force podcast because it's fantastic. And uh, that, mostly, yep. it's mostly about G.I. Joe, but it's often about other 80s toys across the board, mask and, <laughs> you know, everything. What about you? Do you, do you have any uh, shout outs? Well, as I mentioned earlier in the show, last time I had spoken to you, you and Christopher were on the Fully Posable Wrestling Figure Podcast. That was a fun, fun show to have you guys on. The fun part about that one was the G.I. Joe's for Target that nobody can find right now. <laughs> and pre-orders are going at like, I'd say less than a minute, I would say. About a minute, minute yeah. and a half, if that. The pre-orders uh, are crazy. And Chris has been uh, hunting down those Joes like, in, like a madman. He hasn't showered or shaved in like a month because of it. He just, he's all shaggy. He's. <laughs> Wait, is, isn't that normal? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, yeah, actually that's normal. He did. He doesn't shower or shave to begin with. Um. <laughs> I know. The, but the fun part of that, about that episode was those figures popped up while we were recording. So we got the natural reaction. For, we got the natural reaction from not only you, from Christopher, but the, funny part was that scott had zoom on his phone so he couldn't look at it (laughs) while we're recording and he's like hey what does it look like guys what is what does the second roadblock look like you know scott (laughs) that's the way scott talks but (laughs) that's a dead-on impression of scott (laughs) but (laughs) but it was just so much fun having you guys on so anyways uh thank you again for you guys being on and doing that special episode Guys, just check out the Fully Postable Wrestling Figure Podcast every single Sunday. That show drops. You can find it on all your podcast forms. You can find us on Google Play, iTunes. Is iTunes still a thing? Yeah, it's on iTunes. Yeah, yeah, it is. (laughs) Okay. iTunes, you can check out fullyposablepodcast.com, of course. Well, that's it for our fourth show done on La Parca. We hope everyone enjoyed it. Join us next time when we will discuss another Lucha legend, probably. (laughs) <laughs> maybe <laughs> and the plastic forms that they represent eric thank you thank you so much jeffrey uh, this has been great and i really hope we uh have been able to take some people's mind off of the craziness of the world right now <laughs> even if it's only for 40 minutes craziness is an understatement oh god it is <laughs> it's so crazy that could be a whole nother show oh but yeah anyway. that, we, yeah we could do a whole episode about that your boss fights next uh toy line will be the year of 2020 that was yes yeah <laughs> highly articulated pandemic <laughs> <laughs> haps <laughs> yeah. vitruvian haps highly articulated pandem- pandemic syndrome i don't know <laughs> <laughs> thank you to everyone for listening to the fourth episode of lucha libre figures and facts for eric Arano, i am jeff signing off thank you